Hi everyone over at GHI and especially Gary who's been waiting seven months for a custom laptop from me. Uh, I've been hard at work on these things uh, including Tinker 3 and the firmware that I want to show you right now which for the moment I've named Fez PC. Obviously we need to see how everyone at GHI feels about that, especially Gus. But let's dive into some of the really neat functionality here. First off, let's just do something silly like give it a math problem. So it automatically detects that it's math, gives me the answer. Uh, I can do a directory listing. Let me go... I can do multiple directory jumps. Uh, system. Did I spell something wrong? Nope. Okay, so there might be something wrong with the multiple directory jumps, and I can figure that out. Um, but let me do another listing here real quick for you. So as you can see, I've got multiple files here. These are the files that actually start up. Um, so the way this works is there's a single firmware that can run on any GHI board. It uses the SD card object to mount the SD card from any GHI board, and only GHI boards. And then it uh, goes ahead and it launches um, the fez.pe file here while first loading up all its dependencies. So fez.pe is what runs everything here. Um, say I'm looking for a specific file. Let's say I want something to do with GUI. I can do a find. Uh, and you can also see that uh, there's color coding. So anything you see there in purple, once you've completed a keyword that it recognizes, it goes ahead and changes the color to be purple. Uh, and find you can see we've, we've gone through and brought back only files that share the search string that I put in there. Uh, and if we were to do something like a program that it knows, it automatically loads all the programs under system. So if I were to do pack that turns green because it recognizes it as a program, not a command. So the next thing I want to do right here is I'm going to go look at date. We can see no date has been set. So I'm going to enable the NTP. I'm going to set server1 equal to 3.pool.ntp.org. Time zone. I'm going to set it for central, so negative 600 and I'm going to tell it to be enabled. Okay, now I'm going to check the date again. And I'm going to check the time. And as you can see, NTP has been enabled. It's automatically set the date and time for me. Um, something that you might be wondering, how does the system know to use um, the built-in Ethernet on the Spider 2, or how does it know to use the video out? Well, it does that by looking at the startup.ini file, which we can see here says display module is video out. You could have also set it to native, and at native you would have set all the standard things that uh, are automatically taken care of in Gadgeteer, the, the back porch, the front porch, the resolution, all that stuff. And it would take that in. In this case, since we use the video out, we just give it the reset SCL and SDA pins and tell it a mode. In this case, we're saying 800 by 600. And we're turning the debug message or the boot messages off. You can see that we've set here in time NTP is not enabled under network. We've said it's a built in Ethernet. We're going to enable DHCP and we're going to enable dynamic DNS. So that's how this system uh, picks up what it's going to do at startup. Uh, it's also got ping features built in. And uh, really all of the normal file stuff that you would expect. It can do a copy, uh, delete, move, rename, etc. 
Uh, one of the nice things that this has, so you've seen a couple programs launch already. Um, you saw Edit, uh, I think I brought up another one earlier. Those were custom programs. Uh, no, I sorry, I brought up Pack, which I didn't actually launch. Those are custom programs that are built to work specifically with this. But you don't have to use um, anything special to launch it here. Uh, this system can automatically detect whether it's a regular uh, NetMF application or special application. Uh, and say I wanted to do something fun. Right now, if you look here, my directory list only has system. Okay, so I'm going to make something here. I'm going to make games directory with RallyX directory. Oh, that doesn't work. But you can see also we have color-coded responses. Uh, right there it's saying, hey, this directory doesn't exist. I'm going to have to figure out why uh, the multi-level multi CD isn't working at the moment. Uh, okay, so now we've got it empty directory, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an HTTP GET. Uh, since I'm online with my network, I can go ahead and download files from wherever I want. And you can see I'm actually putting in the wrong slashes here. And the reason that I'm doing that is to show off a little bit um, if you were to try this command just with the built-in stuff it's going to fail for two reasons. It's going to fail because you don't have an HTTP at the beginning and because you have the wrong slashes. I however automatically detect these things and fix them for you. So now we've downloaded this RallyX that PE file. And this is just a normal NetMF application. Oh, I typed in rally, that's why that didn't work. Rally x.pe. It's going to detect it, load the application, and we can see here we've got the wonderful Rally X demo that I've used over and over again uh, in all my stuff. So it ties into the keyboard really nice. Uh, and I can just hit escape here and it's going to quit out of the application and everything's going to go back. Um, we've got some really fun features. Let's use the right slashes here. So it said, hey this file is already here, do you want to replace it? I can say yes and now it will download the new update. And it just simply replaces the file. We can do other fun things like check our free memory. Um, there's a help feature built in that will explain to you each of the, uh, the different available methods, what they do. We can even do an echo, hello world. Uh, it also does uh, some more highlighting, for example, uh, anything inside of a quote. It highlights as orange. So, uh, one of the key features about this was I wanted this to be cheap and affordable. Um, this version of the NetMF PC will cost about $120 plus tax and shipping. It is the Fest Fighter 2, um, an Ethernet, one USB, and one SD, and of course the, the uh, power module as well. So I think that this might be a really fun thing. It would be great as a development board if we were to tie all of these things in together into a single board. I think that might be um, really the cheapest offering that you could have for the development boards. Um, <laughs> the, the G30 is at 100 bucks, and I think really if we did uh, you know just a, a VGA out with the uh, the Cobra 2 uh, uh, USB on top of it and power supply you might even uh, you might be able to match that or even beat it. 
Um, possibly putting in, you know, a MP3 decoder might be a really fun idea. Um, so, you know, guys, let me know what you think about this. If, if you want it to remain Fez PC, I think it could be really fun to have this as an insider thing before it launches, uh, get some more apps developed for it, and get it out the door. Uh, we can even put, um, you know, GUIs on top of it like you've seen for my other uh, projects like Pixis 2, Pixis 3, Gadgetus, uh, and so on. So I really hope you enjoyed this. If you guys have any questions or anything like that you want to talk, you have all my, con all my contact information, and I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks. Bye.